Hey tasters! I'm setting up today for a video about Pythagoras. Today we're going to be doing some drawing. And the reason we're drawing is this little beauty. Let me put the microphone on so you can hear me better. Hey tasters, you have probably heard of Pythagoras. He's the guy who told your maths teacher to tell you that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. I think that's pronounced hypotenuse, actually. No wonder then that you never realized that Pythagoras was a bit of a frat party prankster type. He came up with this, the Pythagoras cup. If you're feeling dramatic, you could also call this the cup of justice. This looks like a normal cup until you look inside. The ball of this cup has a strange central column, almost like a bundt cake pan. Intriguing. So let's start drawing and I'll let you know what this is for and how it works. At the bottom of this cup there is a small hole. A tiny pipe runs from the bottom of this column all the way to the top of the column and all the way down to the base of the cup. Red wine or white wine? We'll go with pink. So, when the cup is filled with a reasonable amount of wine, the top of the column is still peeking through. And at this point, physics hasn't taken over our drinking. You see, because there is a hole here, you are in fact filling the pipe too, but only up to this point, because liquids rise up to the same level. But if you're greedy and you've overfilled your cup with wine, you have quite literally crossed the line. What's invisible to you is that your wine is rising within the column as well. Let me show you. So if you're really outrageously naughty and you fill your cup all the way to the top, the wine will rise over the tipping point inside the column. Gravity will create a siphon within the pipe and all your wine will be drawn up the pipe and down the column all the way to the bottom, spilling out of the cup in seconds. Should we see if this cup actually works? So while I'm doing a, a magic trick, I'm going to use this lovely rosé by Barafaka's Winery. It's called The Three Witches. We are about to do a magic trick after all. And uh, it's called The Three Witches, nothing to do with Macbeth. Um, it's, uh, it's because it's made with three really enchanting varieties, Syrah, Ayurvedico, and Moscofilero. Uh, this is uh, very fruity, very aromatic, semi-sweet, absolutely lovely, which is why I have no intention of wasting it. And this is what the second glass is for. So, this cup 
has a line within. I don't know how clearly you can see it. That's supposed to guide you on the road of virtue. Do not cross that line because this is what happens when you do. We are safe. We are safe. There is nothing wrong with what we're doing. We are safe. But are you ready for this? As soon as I give in to greed, the cup of justice will punish me. Oh dear, what's going on? What's going on here? Oh no, my wine, my beautiful wine, all gone. Damn you, Pythagoras. All gone. But luckily, saved. Thus, Pythagoras endeavoured to teach his students not to give in to greed and self-indulgence. Some reports claim that Pythagoras was killed by an angry mob, but I'm sure such rumours are unfounded, purely a coincidence. So, next time you pour yourself a glass of wine, remember the virtues of moderation and self-control. But also remember to rely on some basic principles of physics. That will allow you to pour yourself an amount of wine that is just right for you without appearing greedy and self-indulgent. It's all in the glassware tasters. Here's to the cup of self-indulgence. Cheers. Tasters. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Remember to leave a comment and let me know. Have you ever heard of the cup of justice? Do you like to serve your wine in a delicate small glass or a self-indulgent glass? Let me know in a comment below. Remember to subscribe and I will see you on the next video. Also, tasters, if there are any physicists out there, let me know if I got this explanation right. Bye!